there is a heaven. But he doesn't want you to believe that there's a hell need a heaven. He just wants you to believe that when you die, you just stop existing and nothing else happens. But the Bible talks about that after death, then comes the judgment. The judgment is after death. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says, It's accounted once to die, then comes the judgment. Once to die. So after death, the judgment. So if there's a judgment, there's got to be somewhere that God is going to put you, amen, whether you're right or wrong. There's somewhere that you got to go. Because you will have a judgment if nobody, amen, if there be no sentence. Amen. And so look right, what the devil is doing now. He's blinding the minds of the people that the people will not believe that, amen, that there is a heaven or hell. Now when we go back to the church, the church did begin when you came on the scene. The church came out of Jesus Christ. The church is the bride of Christ that comes out of himself. Amen. That he takes the church out of himself. And he sanctified the church. Amen. He sanctified the church. He cleaned up the church. And he gave a church, the church an assignment to accomplish. Amen. And, 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 then, and, and that's why even in the Old Testament, amen, when they talks about Jesus, Amen. They didn't literally call his name, but they point to him. Because the Old Testament was the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. The Old Testament is the is, Amen, is the hidden Christ, and the New Testament is the revelation of Jesus Christ. No one can know Jesus if he doesn't reveal himself to you. This is why it got to be by revelation. And not by senses. Your five senses cannot locate who Jesus is. Amen. When Jesus gets ready to, to, to reveal himself to you, he does it through your spirit. It is the spirit of God, the spirit of man, is what is the candlestick of the Lord that searches the deeper in parts of the body. Amen. That's why any times, friend, if you are going to know Jesus, you got to know your Bible. Because your Bible will point you to Jesus. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Paul says in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead. That means Jesus who is the who is the foundation of the church. Amen. How he revealed himself to the church. Amen. That's why you got to be born again. Because Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that the natural man knoweth not the things of God because they are spiritually discerned. You can never know the things of God if you have, been not, you have not been born again. Born again is a rebirth. Amen. It is the spirit of God that, amen, it is your spirit that has been born again. Amen. That means you've been born before and is born again. It's going to be renewed. Because Jesus had to reveal himself to the body of Christ. I believe in the time that we are living in right now, saints of God, we just can't have church the way we used to. Because what is going on in the world now, amen, the church got to know who Jesus Christ is. I said the church must know who Jesus is. Amen, because the Bible says that, amen, in him we live and in him we have our existing. That means if you move Jesus out of the church, you don't have no church. Because Jesus is the foundation of the church. The church can never go forward if Jesus is not in the church. The problem is we go, amen, we come to the place where we call a church. And a lot of times we are not connected to Jesus. It is so important for us to be connected to Jesus not being connected to religion because religion can't save you only Jesus could amen as a religion can't save you only Jesus could amen that's why the Bible declared glory be to God the Bible says amen in, in St. John chapter 3 he, Jesus said if I be lifted up above the earth I will draw all man unto me I want you to know now 
Amen. Where we are here now, amen, is going to take the power of God in the church. The power of God must come back in the church. We've been having church so long with no power. We've been having church with no power, no deliverance. There's, there's coming there and one bar in service. Nobody get delivered, nobody get healed. But the church is the powerhouse of God on the earth. The church is the powerhouse of God on the earth. And that's why she, that's what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Except God builds the house. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that except God build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. God got to build this. The house of God. Amen. Amen. The house of God is where God, amen, control the house of God. Amen. We are living in, we are living in a serious time now, saints of God, that, that us, the church, the saints of God, got to know how to pray. We got to know how to pray. We got to stand on the word of God. We got to know that we are the church of the living God. Amen. We are the church of the living God, and the church is under attack. I say the church is under attack. Amen. Everywhere. Amen. Because we are living in the last and evil days where everything that the devil has in his power, he is using it against the church. He is using it against the church. That's why the church has the learn to fight back. Amen. The Bible says, Amen. Glory be to God. From the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence taken by force. That means the enemy is not going to let it go. You have to take it by force. Amen. As a church, you got to learn to declare some stuff. You got to learn to speak those things that be not as do they were. You just can't sit down and wait for stuff to happen. You got to make it happen. You can't sit down and wait for somebody to hang out. You got to make it happen. Oh God, we got to make it happen. Because, amen, the enemy can see to it that it will not happen if you will make it happen. Saints of God, we are up against forces of darkness. Yes. Because anytime you mention the church, there is a negative part of the church, amen, the forces of darkness that are engaging against the church. Amen. They are engaging against the church. They don't want the church to go on. And look at your neighbor for the first time and say, neighbor, neighbor, it is Christ that builds the church. Amen. Amen. That means that you meet the church here, yeah? and when you leave this place, you're going to leave the church going. Amen. Amen. Because the church doesn't belong to a man, it doesn't belong to a woman. The church belongs to Jesus. Amen. The church is the bride of Christ Jesus. And none of us can clean the church. Because none of us belong, amen, in the church. It is Jesus that owns the church. That's why he says, upon this revelation, knowledge about who I is, you can build the church. The church is built upon the revelation, knowledge of Jesus Christ. That means that if you're going to build the church, you got to know who Jesus Christ is. you got to know that he's more in this a son of God. Ah, oh God, he is more in this the word of God. The church, amen, the church is the embodiment of Christ Jesus. I say the church is the embodiment of Christ Jesus. That means Jesus Christ is the embodiment of God. So when you see Jesus, you see God. It's the full day, amen. Amen, because Jesus is the hundred percent God and was a hundred percent man. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Jesus, glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's why it's going to take the revelation of who Jesus Christ is to build the church. Revelation. Revelation must be received from God. Amen. And revelation is given from God. And revelation must be received by you. God will breathe revelation into your spirit. And your spirit will receive revelation. And what your spirit does, it will enlighten your mind. That the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. That you will know exactly who Jesus Christ is. Amen. See, still it says it is so long that we just come to church and we don't even know who Jesus is. 
We come to church, we don't know who Jesus is, but the Bible says that the scripture testify about me. That means Jesus is the prophet that prophesies the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Moses start with Jesus. Huh? Jeremiah talk about Jesus. Ezekiel talk about Jesus. Isaiah talk about Jesus. Every prophet, major, minor prophet, they point to Jesus. Because Jesus is the focus of the Bible. Amen. Amen. You take Jesus out of the Bible, you just get a, a book that's full of religion and full of rules and law. But it is Jesus that really makes the word of God the word of God. Jesus was the incarnated word of God. Hallelujah. He's the face of God because you couldn't see God in the Old Testament because God didn't have a face. But in the New Testament, Paul says that we are seeing God through the face of Jesus. He's the very essence of this invisible God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is why the church need to esteem Jesus. Amen. We need to esteem Jesus even more. But you can't esteem who you don't know. Because we are fallen in perdition. We're not even, most folks, most of us, have not yet developed a relationship with Jesus Christ for ourselves. The only part, or the only information we got about Jesus is what they taught us. But the Bible said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Because if you're going to know him, you got to go after him. You can't know no if you don't go after them. You got to know him. Amen. You got to know Jesus. You got to know Jesus. 